bit about SAP Mobile, SAP Security, and attacks on SAP Mobile. This is the topic of my presentation. Well, a couple of cells, a couple of words about myself. I'm a IT security uh, specialist in ERP scan. I research ERP systems, being uh, more particularly ERP SAP and web application security, web application researcher. Our company, ERP Scan, is involved in the research of uh, ERP systems, security of ERP systems. We work in more, we have more than, we play in more than 60 conferences over, all over the world. We speak on them and by the number of vulnerabilities discovered in the products of SAP, we're the leader from the point of view. And today, my presentation, I have divided into three main parts. In the first part, we will learn about SAP uh, mobile platform. Then we'll learn about its main components, which components do exist, how do they function, and how do they correlate to each other. The second part will be dedicated to SAP mobile platform vulnerabilities that we have discovered. I will tell you why did we work in these directions and how can we fix them and in the third part i will tell you some conclusions and uh, we will look at what is to be done in order to minimize the threat if the attack happened against your sap mobile system sap mobile is a platform which has approximately the following structure. It can be divided into three main components. The first component is a public network. In the public network, we have all the devices which can be brought to work by the employees of the company, which are used and which can get certain information from the SAP system in which they work in a company and which information they get connected by their devices to SAP mobile platform which is already inside of the corporate network it consists of two parts is a sub SAP mobile server SAP mobile server uh, is a, a core of the SAP mobile platform and its second part is a customer database which contains all the information about SAP platform. It has uh, <clears throat> information about devices which can get connected to the SAP platform. It has the information about the users, etc. And the third part is a back end where the services are located of these ERP systems, it's the back end, and SAP Mobile Platform gets the information from devices, respectively analyzes which of this information from the back end should be pulled and transferred to the client devices. It has four more versions. Uh, right now we are going to look at 2.3 and 3.0. Uh, as you can see, with the increase of the versions, uh, with the development of SAP mobile platform, we see the higher number of protocols being supported. And you can see which uh, protocol on which level does it work. Uh, one level pointed out like a Safari, and we are not going to speak about it today, but afterwards, we are going to tell you separately in a separate presentation or we are going to tell you about a security about of a uh, sapafari cpfari well sap platform consists of three main services which are sap control center sap control center represents portal which is being used by the admin to control sap mobile platform the working process uh, is a CC service, which has four main ports. Uh, 2100 and four nines are used inside 
of these processes and port 8282 and 8283 is used for connections between HTTP protocol HTTP protocol and transfer this information to the portal. And I would like to say that 8282 port uses by default HTTP port, which redirects the calls to HTTPS, which is located on the port 8283. The second service, SAP SQL Anywhere. SAP SQL Anywhere is a database which was developed in 1990s. And in the year 2006, when they have implemented all the main components and services of parallel processing of highly loaded services, they have started developing it uh, more widely and they started using it in a wider set of products. And when they have procured a Sybase company, in the year 2010, they've started uh, SAP Anywhere, and they started integrating all of this into their old products. SAP Mobile Platform, you can use not only SAP uh, SQL Anywhere database, but you can also use Oracle database as well, and MS SQL as well. SAP SQL Anywhere is a very flexible database, which, is, which uses big number of connectors and other programming languages and you can easily get connected to this database with different languages and you can get data which you need for example in normal working condition it listens to three main uh, processes which are responsible mostly for data processing uh, the uh, third service is sap mobile server sap mobile server uh, represents six main services but today we're going to look at two uh mobile link and admin web service this is a core of the mobile sap platform which is responsible for processing requests which are coming from the portable devices mobile link is a process it's a software which is responsible for syncing data between a uh, server and client The client can get connected to the server through the internet with the usage of uh, all these protocols listed here. And uh, during the connection, syncing is happening between the database of a client and server database. And the second service that we're going to look at is the admin web service. Admin web service. uses a uh, Cassini web server 1.0 and it needs it so that admin in a, from the local server would be able to control SAP mobile server so he can use methods listed here in order to create uh, administrators uh, create users remove the email etc so let's move on and let's look at vulnerabilities that were discovered by us during our research. The first one is decrypting of the SAP mobile platform GIOP, GIOP protocol. GIOP protocol is used by the process MobiLink in order to administrator opens the console, gets connected to the SAP mobile platform to control packages which are uh, which can be removed uh, on the SAP mobile platform by the admin he can also look at logs that were generated and receive an information about the general condition of SAP mobile platform as such when he gets connected through the console to SAP mobile platform, he sends requests which looks like that. And you can see here that in this request, he transfers certain information which fields have the name user and pass.
and in the blue color i have shown the information which uh, can be the name of the user login and the password of the user of course it's not possible to see it in an open way because it's been uh closed and uh, it's been encrypted but we have found the function which is responsible for decryption of this data then we have developed a software we developed a program and if you will able to look here it doesn't require very tough algorithm of coding it uses only the shift the algorithm of shifting is being used here so we have developed a software a program which gets at the input these uh, increasing encrypted data and as a consequence at the output it gives us login and password that were transferred through that were transferred by the administrator of the server in order to get the connection let's remember this program because afterwards we will also use it the second vulnerability that was discovered, it's XXE in the SAP mobile platform. XXE represents a vulnerability which is related to injection of the internal external entities into XML and wrong processing on the server side of those. The vulnerability has received this particular CVE that you see here, 2015-2013. And SAP portal, I've already shown it to you. It has a such interface. It's a development and action script with the usage of Adobe Flash Player capabilities. Uh, during the decumulation of the file, which is used here, you will not be able to see any other references and links, but in order to see which other links and URLs are used in the portal that you see here. We decided to look for files which could have which could contain information which could be interesting for the hacker. Well, two files which called web XML and service config XML, we decided to look for them and we found one of these files which is located uh, on this particular uh, pathway. And we know that an SAP mobile platform 2.3 version uses container for servlets, which are uh, Java based Jetty. So we discovered this XML file which contains this particular record and you can see that it has the message broker servlet whose address is not completely specified so we don't know how can we open this particular servlet and see which requests it re receives and processes then we have decided to search for a file uh, with the name service config XML we have discovered this file which contains this particular record and this is a structure of this record and it describes the name of the server, the port, and the full pathway to this particular servlet. Then, in the same structure, you can see a Java, the pathway to the Java file, which processes this request sent to this particular servlet. So the further research uh, gave us the possibility to discover that this Java file uses XML parser, which receives this XML document and processes it. But the processing is happening in a wrong way. Also, I would like to tell you that next to this particular servlet, there were five more other servlets, access to which is anonymous. So we have sent uh, request of the following composition with the injection of the external entity which specifies to the server that it needs to on behalf of the server send a request for this particular address and after sending we have understood that server is vulnerable to xxe attack it 
improperly processes these requests. XXE gives you a possibility to the attacker, in some cases, to read files, scan internal ports, and sometimes download files to server. So we were able to read one of those files located in this particular pathway. And uh, I can tell you in advance that in SAP Mobile Platform, it contains a lot of files which have confidential information, uh, passwords, logins, and many other informations. So in this one, uh, it contains the information about a key, which is called SAP IMO EPA. IMO UPA. It's a kind of encrypted data, certain encrypted data, which of course is encrypted, but with the usage of a program which decrypts the data transferred by GIOI protocol, we were able to decrypt this data, and as a result, we have received a system logging and password of a system admin. In order to fix this vulnerability, well, I would like to tell you in the beginning that this vulnerability related to Java stack in a SAP system, we also have been telling on the Black Hat USA in 2011. You can download it from the internet and watch it. In this presentation, we've been telling about servlets which can be described in web XML files which are located on a server. Also, detailed information, well, I cannot disclose it to you, but nevertheless, we have found another servlet which is responsible for generation of logs and their reading, access to which is also anonymous. So the attacker uh, can send a lot of requests to the server, which will generate, during each request, the server will generate separate log file with a unique name, in other words, the attacker can send a lot of files, and by this, he can uh, overload the server's memory, submobile server. In order to fix this vulnerability, SAP recommends to install the node, which is uh, specified here. Well, the next vulnerability, ACRF, uh, submobile platform 3.0. SAP Mobile Platform 3.0 represents, well, this is the admin console, and it is simply a very flexible portal through which administrator can get access to all information he needs about the content of the SAP Mobile Platform. He can get logs, he can add repositories which have uh, applications that he could use in the future. He can create administrators. He can remove logs, etc., etc. So we have discovered SCRF uh, vulnerability, which gives the possibility. Uh, for example, the admin goes to a certain site to look some pictures. For example, cats in here, and the attacker knowing in advance that he will follow this link, injects into this page JavaScript code of the following content. After opening this page of the administrator, by the administrator, this JavaScript code sends request to SAP mobile platform. The following content is being sent. So it's a pathway all the way to servlet which processes these requests and post request which has username and password to create the administrator on the server usually it's this csrf attack and he can create administrator uh, afterwards uh, the attacker can use this administrator uh, identification data for his own purposes uh, in order to get to enter the portal to remove these logs and there's also some other requests which are subject to csrf attack 
the attacker can create repository, remove server logs, create applications on SAP mobile platform, and uh, do many other things. So CSRF token is not present here. So the SAP company recommends to install SAP node of the following ID to fix this particular vulnerability. SAP mobile platform also uses Cassini 1.0, which is a web server. It's a very simple web server. Cassini does not support any authentication, does not support HTTPS traffic. It listens to a local port and processes uh, requests to static pages. It also doesn't have any CSRF token. It's a request to create administrator. So the attacker can also make a simple CSRF tag, but with one precondition that the admin, admin will enter the page which sends these particular requests from the server. Developers of Cassini, they do warn, I don't know why SAP uses it, uh, they warn that Cassini server 1.0 cannot be used because it's subject to these attacks, and it doesn't have any security modules inbuilt in it. So to the Cassini web server, you can send requests, uh, for example, to create administrators, uh, to remove administrators, to remove users, and remove certain mails. So with the help of CSRF, CSRF attack, you can realize all these methods and uh, by this, the company can have significant damage. The next vulnerability is related to database uh, that we have used. In a given case, we have used vulnerability of buffer overflow in SAP SQL anywhere. In the year 2008 and in the year 2014, we have discovered certain vulnerabilities in this platform in this particular database. Also, vulnerabilities have been related to the buffer overflow, BOF. Our research we have started by taking client part of SQL Anywhere and the server part, and we have tried to create connection, uh, client server connection between them. But as you can see it from here, we have installed the connection and we see the data being transferred from server to client and backwards. And so we took the first request, which transfers information about logging and password for getting this connection. This request has the following content. The first bytes are responsible for the version being used on the side of the client. For example, in this case, it's a SQL Anywhere version 16 on the second picture. You can see the field which is responsible for the name of protocol that's going to be used. It's DS protocol. TDS protocol and it includes the data that's going to be transferred and in the end you can see the name of the server to which we initialize our connection. The research have shown us that after sending this request which represents two connection strings 
during sending this request to the server in the process of sending it because 50, 20, 50, uh, 21, the SQL servers, you can see disconnection of services which work from the system account. So in other words, it's a DOS of SAP SQL anywhere. <clears throat> and no device can be initialized with the SAP platform, SAP Anywhere platform. So the system SAP Anywhere platform is non-functioning it stops it halts at this moment of time in order to start it administrator should enter the server should find these two services and should enable them in order to fix this vulnerability one should install this particular sap node with this id 2108161 we have looked at vulnerabilities related to the server side so the vulnerability that was discovered by us in the client side, uh, speaking about SAP mobile platform, client software which is used for the SAP mobile platform can be downloaded from available stores like Web Market, Apple Store, Windows Phone Mark. All these clients can be downloaded free of charge. And given case, we have looked at SAP ERM and Word. It represents software, a program which is used in medical facilities to <coughs> enable employees of this medical facility to quickly communicate with each other, to transfer some confidential information in order to be able to look at some patient's cards and some other related information. Uh, the vulnerability that was discovered here, it was in SQL injection vulnerability. It was a possibility of programs uh, installed on Android turned to the SAP EMR unwired program. Uh, to send a vulnerable uh, request to the content provider and content provider it's a part of Android program which is responsible for responsible for communication between applications so one application uh, through the contact provider can get data from another application and in a given case attacker in any way has made an employee of medical facility in a given case has made him to install this program which sends request to acquire data from content provider of SAP MR unwired and <coughs> the program of the Violator can get the data from the database of this particular software. So, uh, vulnerable contain vulnerable content providers are noted on this uh, slide. The only thing that one needs to make this attack, the attacker needs uh, for this program to have in Android manifest uh, this particular file, which has information about which application has which extensions in order to uh, vitalize this record, which will permit to the attacker's uh, software to get access to this particular program. In order to fix fix it, uh, it's recommended to install this particular SAP node, 1864.51.8, or to switch on the update of this software, and it will additionally download this uh, update so let's draw certain conclusions out of everything above said in order to prevent attacks against SAP mobile platform it is recommended to install all the nodes on timely basis SAP security nodes which are published by the SAP company on timely basis properly set the SAP platform so in other words <coughs> regular employees should be prohibited to get access to the administration portal 
very often it happens that when you speak to the administrators, they say, so what? Uh, they can have access, but he doesn't have logging and password uh, to enter the system of administration. But as I were able to show them, there are servlets which don't require any authentication. So you can call them anonymously. You can read files in the server through them and therefore get all the necessary confidential information. The second thing which is to be done is uh, to periodically do backup of logs from subserver. And the third thing is to divide roles between administrators, if there's a lot of them. So you shouldn't give uh, all the administrators <clears throat> access to the file system and to the portal as well and possibility to change the program so administrator could easily if he has both of these uh, accesses to the file system and to the program he can change the program whose changes uh, will be reflected in the logs then he can go into the file system remove those logs and then change the program by a standard one and at the same period of time his program that he installs will make certain negative functions for the functioning of the company and the company can carry certain damages also it is recommended to periodically monitor the system uh, for the topic of attacks that were done previously and maybe they were not discovered in previous periods they have not been discovered uh, previously well that's it from what I wanted to tell you if any questions I will readily answer them vulnerabilities that you have listed to us today have you discovered them in the result of a certain pen test or you've been just uh, in result of researching the platform itself not a pen test we have done our own research so it happens you have done the analysis of the source code right why these were not pen tests It was the analysis of SAP mobile system that was pre-installed uh, in our premises. It was not a black box testing, but it was a white box test. We had an access to the server part and a client part as well. And then you have found the proper security notes for them. Security notes were produced on the basis of those vulnerabilities that we have discovered. Oh, I see. Thank you. Thank you very much.